The following podcast contains spoilers for Escape from L.A., Call him Snake, Snake Pliskin. You have been warned. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of KFR News Radio. This is your host, Glenn. Glenn Warren, <laughs> motherfucker, along with your host, Mike, Mike Hicks. Did that intro make you wet? Yeah. Uh, snake. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Pliskin. Snake Pliskin. <laughs> How you doing, Glenn? I'm not bad, man. I'm exhausted. And uh, other than, you know, the things we did, which yeah. you know exactly why. Oh, yeah. We, we shot a movie in the winterous mountains of northeastern Pennsylvania today, mm-hmm. which is why I'm kind of glad that that happened because it made my voice like the perfect amount of raspy for me to do that voice. Yeah, it did. Yeah. It was, it was, a, it was a really awesome weekend. And, uh, it was, definitely, yeah. uh definitely needed to happen for a lot of us. We were all kind of obviously COVID cramped and we yeah. needed to get out and make something creative and talk to each other once again. So that was really fun to do, and it went swimmingly, in it my did, opinion. Yeah. yeah, the footage looks great so far. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm confident that we can at least cut something good together. Um, mm-hmm. Whether it's amazing or not still remains to be seen, but it will definitely be good. So Somewhere yeah. down the line, it will be arrived in our eyes one day. Yes, it will be a plug one day for, for, mm-hmm. uh, for both of us. But, uh, yeah, what uh, what have you watched this week? I know we were busy for pretty much the whole weekend, so we didn't in, have much time. In my usual downtime, which is the weekend, uh, I didn't watch anything other than uh, you telling people what to do and me pointing a microphone at people. Uh, I watched, yeah. uh, or I, I rewatched The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the David Fincher film that came out in 2011 with Daniel Craig and uh, Rooney Mara. I always get the sisters mixed up. Yeah, Kate uh-huh. Mara. I think she's the older one. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think so. But um, unfortunately for her, less famous. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I do absolutely love this movie, and rewatching it, I was like, I don't know, maybe I'll feel different about it because a lot of people don't seem to like it as much as I do. Yeah. And no, I still love the shit out of it. Uh, because old people are like, oh, the book adaptation is much better than the uh, the other films that they're just m- much more uh, adapted more than this one. I'm like, okay, shut up, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> let me let me enjoy this, please. Yeah. Um, and besides that, we uh, we both watched Escape from LA, which we will talk about. So yes, we. I'm a little short and sweet this week. Yes, you are. You're always sweet. But not really that short. Average. Average Average height. height. Yeah. Um, so I only watched three movies this week, which, mm-hmm. you know, I kind of expected being how busy I was this week. Yep. Um, preparing for everything. The first one I watched is Pieces of a Woman. Uh, it, it's a Netflix film that came out. I think it came out on Netflix this year, but was released in whatever theaters were open at the end of December. Mm-hmm. And so it's technically a 2020 film. Uh, it's starring Vanessa Kirby, Shia LaBeouf, Ellen Burstein. Um, I think it's uh, Ben Safty, one of the Safty brothers, the one who is the actor in Good Time. Uh, he, yeah, I, he's, think, I think it's Ben. He's in it as well. Um, and uh, it's essentially <laughs> probably shouldn't watch this with a, a pregnant wife, but it's about a couple that loses their baby uh, shortly after childbirth. Yeah, I couldn't imagine that being a very well-connected uh, time together. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I watched it by myself. Caitlin didn't watch okay. it. I said, <laughs> I, I said she should probably skip out on that one. Yeah. Um, but, like, that... Uh, the, the, the big thing about this film, like, the big push uh, mm-hmm. for its hype and everything is that the birthing scene is all a one-shot. I see what you did there with the big push. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, but so y- y- the entire birthing scene is one shot. It's not a one shot movie, but that scene's yeah, one shot. That's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, it was a really incredible scene. However, because that scene was a one plot, uh, one shot, it yeah. made a B plot, like a legal battle B plot in the s- last two acts of the film an hmm. impossibility. Yeah. So it kind of like in its artistic awesomeness for that first act. 
it ruined the rest of the film. Yeah. Uh, and so so it's a really unbalanced film. Like, parts of it are amazing, and then parts of it are just very clunky. Okay. Um, it's overall a good film. Great performances. See it for the performances, specifically Ellen Burstein and uh, Vanessa Kirby. Yeah. Um, they're both really, really great in it. But I, I think that it kind of did itself an injustice yeah. by I- doing the one shot. Yeah, this is a movie that's kind of on my radar right now. I do love uh, Vanessa Kirby and the few things that I've seen her in. So, yeah. And uh, between you and uh, John this weekend talking about it a little bit, I do want to uh, give it a give it a give it a whirl. Yeah, it's definitely worth the watch. But I, I was Without just kind any of pregnant people near me. Yes, yes, definitely. I was just a little disappointed by um, how un- unbalanced it was. Yeah. Like it could have been a lot better. Um, then I watched Escape from New York just to prefer, prepare for Escape from L.A. because I have seen Escape from New York but not Escape from L.A. Mm-hmm. But it's also been like 10, 15 years since I've seen Escape from yeah. New York. Uh, so I wanted a little refresher. Um, you know, it's Escape from New York. It's not a great <laughs> movie, but it's a fun movie. Yep. I wouldn't say it's quite my speed, but I enjoyed watching it. Yeah. And then I watched Escape from L.A., which we'll got, get into in a moment. And Absolutely. we are done talking about what movies we watch under six minutes. I know. Six minutes insane. right now. Holy crap So uh, let's talk about news. I know we got a few oh, pieces of news. Yes. I'm going to let you take a run because I don't have anything. Absolutely. Uh, let's start out with the uh, kind of boring bit right off the bat. Um, so Justice League Snyder Cut, which we had originally thought was going to be a really long fucking movie, turned out to be a uh, four-episode, like, miniseries uh, of, like, hour-long, obviously, episodes, uh, which I was totally down for, which, uh, yeah. <laughs> so on and so forth, but I could care less about the movie regardless, honestly, because my hopes aren't high. They just officially said once again that they're going to revert back to the movie instead of the four episodes. So I'm just so done about this movie and this thing or show or whatever yeah, they want to do with it. There's been too much hype over it where it's it's not going to meet anyone's expectations because of how much they've been like dicking everyone along. Mm-hmm. And I, I just um, I wish I still wish that it was the four episodes instead of a hour or like full movie because a I think that's going to lose a good chunk of the audience. Honestly, mm-hmm. uh, obviously. The only people who care are the people who care. But I think I think the people who kind of were like strung along this thing of like, oh well, now it's a miniseries. I might actually be on board. Now that now they're finding out that it's not going to be a miniseries, and now they're going to be like, well, well, fuck it again. I don't care. Nobody <laughs> wants to sit through four hours of movie. Yeah. At least you know, not the average person. I'm sure you and I would do it easily. I, I, uh, I would do done, it if it was good. I was going to say we've done marathons of it before. Yeah. But, and even uh, even if it wasn't good, I would probably like start watching it and then just split it up. Yeah. Um, so there's there's that piece of news. Take it as you will. Yeah. Me, I could care less. I could have cared less a long time ago. Uh, but the fun news now. Let's just jump on directly into that. Uh, Army Hammer has basically been uh, kind of accused of being a cannibal in in a way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which. Is weird. He also uh, basically, when I got or when we got back to uh, our our lovely homes, found out that he's had some some other accusations against him as well. Not accusations, but other just shit kind of piling up on his already nice little pile that he's got going on. Um, as far as I know, it was like an ex girlfriend basically had talked about how. Army Hammer is basically a cannibal, and or has at least said cannibal. Um, fantasies in types of ways, yeah. um, but there's there's no evidence as far as like messages and stuff like that has gone, and that's what she's like claiming that there is, but nobody's seen any of these things or probably will ever. I wonder where she learned that move. Yeah, I, da, I don't know. Da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, so like it's it's funny, and because we were all kind of talking about it this weekend, um, very briefly. And we were all talking about it. I was like, how the, how the fuck do we assume that he's a cannibal? What, does he eat other people's fingernails or something like that? And that's, that's, <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to use that for the podcast. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. So there's that. And apparently the other, like, allegations that he has is there was, he had, like, this photo on his personal account or some shit like that of, like, a, 
kind of scandalous little clad thing going on of a woman like bent over on a bed and uh, called her Miss Miss Cayman, which was supposed to be some like f- fucking model or like Ms. some like Ms. whatever like universe or not universe. That's dragging it too far, but. So he got some backlash against that because it was connected to a chick who obviously was a Miss Cayman at a certain point. And he sh- it's just, there's just a lot going on in his yeah. area right now. And uh, it's very weird. Yeah. And I don't know how else to talk about it other than to bring you guys that fun news that he yeah. could be eating other people's fingernails, fingernails or <laughs> human limbs. I don't know yet. Yeah, John, our, our John Clark brought up a good point uh, that like he's in the middle of a divorce right now. And mm-hmm. his wife hasn't jumped on this train. Mm-hmm. So, like, if it, there was anything substantiated about it, I feel like a person going through a divorce would definitely jump on that oh, yeah. to try to use it in court. So, like, that that to me says everything. That That's not to say that, like, people shouldn't listen. But yeah. also, if we didn't learn anything from the U.S. election, unless there's evidence... Mm-hmm. Maybe shrug it off. Like, maybe maybe calm down just a And also, a unless of a second. there's evidence, don't bring anything up. Yeah. Um. I mean, granted, that's kind of a gray area with certain yeah, certain mean, crimes, you, but you, take, you know what a, I'm saying. Take a step back and don't assume. You know. Yes. Instead don't assume. Of, like like definitely listen to the person who's saying it, but also mm-hmm. try to get some evidence out of it because because yeah. until then, n- nothing. Let's just say. <laughs> This was just a fun little tabloid for me that I just An read. innocent cannibal until proven guilty cannibal. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. anyway, uh, any other pieces of news before we uh, move on? That's all I really have. All right, so let's get into <laughs> Escape from L.A., where, surprisingly, I don't remember there being cannibals in it. Yeah, I don't think there is. Yeah. Which you think there would be maybe a stray cannibal, like, running around somewhere. Yeah, a little cannibalism. What are you doing, anybody? Steve Buscemi? Who knows? But anyway... <laughs> <laughs> I'm using a database of five million sociopathic personalities. He hit the bottom of the curve. Catches on quick, doesn't she? This town loves a winner. We just say we play a little Bangkok rules. Nobody draws until this hits the ground. You ready? Escape from L.A. Snake Plissken is once again called in by the United States government to recover a potential doomsday device from Los Angeles, now an autonomous island where undesirables are deported. Mm. It is directed by John Carpenter, written by John Carpenter, Nick Castle, Deborah Hill, and Kurt Russell. Ooh, I didn't know that. Uh, it is starring Kurt Russell, Steve Buscemi, Peter Fonda, Cliff Robertson, Valeria Galino, Stacey Keach, Pam Greer, Bruce Campbell, uh, George Corofache, uh, or Coraface. I'm assuming it's Coraface, because Coraface would be his stupid last name. Wait, Bruce Campbell was in this? Yeah, he was uh, He was the Surgeon General of Beverly Hills. He had a bunch of prosthetics on his face. I didn't even notice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a probably one of the earliest of sequels way after it, there should have been a sequel thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first Escape from New York came out in 1981. This came out in 1996, 15 it's years. Definitely they a even, jump. Yeah, they even made a little joke about it, how uh, when we they first see Snake Plissken, one of the people says, oh, he's a little retro, don't you think? Yeah. And uh, I, I found that to be very self-aware, and I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, this movie, it's, it's funny, because I think, what was the original? It was, it took place in 97 or something like that? 88. 88. And then... The, this one took takes place in 2013, and Snake doesn't look a day over, or well, kind of a day over the last movie that he was in, yeah. Kurt Russell at least. But uh, it's it's funny that like what is that what is that gap in between those movies? It's 15 it's, years yeah. for the movies, uh, and then <sighs> 25 years <laughs> mm-hmm. for the for the time period. Yeah, so this so. movie's very self aware of itself. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's 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 funny. It um, is. 
so uh, I haven't watched the first one in probably five or six years, honestly. Mm-hmm. I went to rewatch it today because I assumed because the second one is on Amazon that the first one is on Amazon. No, there's that's how they Kurt, get you. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of Kurt Russell movies on Amazon right now, so I kind of just assumed. Yeah. And of course, I looked up and HBO Max has uh, the first Escape movie. I was like. <sighs> Well, that just made me sad. I was so excited. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I assume you've seen it more than one time, correct? Uh, I have seen it more than once, yes. Okay. I had only seen it once, which is why I just rented it, um, mm-hmm. uh, f- spent $4 on the rental. I kind of at least just wanted to refresh myself yeah. of the character so I could talk about it. Um, and kudos to Kurt Russell. 15 years later, he plays it exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, that's not a knock on him at all. I mean, yeah. th- this is the kind of movie where there doesn't really need to be an arc. Yeah. Like it's it's a dumb fun action adventure sci-fi movie. Like it's it's it knows what it is. It doesn't try to be anything else. Mm-hmm. And uh you know, to the point where you said it's very self-aware t- to the point where Snake Plissken might as well like he's a badass character, don't get me wrong, but he's a fucking idiot. Yeah. He does so many stupid things. Always is able to get out of it to his credit. Yeah. But there's situations where like any logical thinking person would never be in those situations in the first place. <laughs> to the point where at the end of this one, the president says, I told you he was dumb because he fell for a trick. Yes, yeah. he, he had kind of seen it coming, but like he also fell for the trick in a way. Yeah, there's um, many there are many times in this movie where they're like, Yeah, he's He's kind of an idiot, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he is. Uh, I think the dumbest thing... um, Fuck, I I don't even remember what he did, but, like, he did something where, like, he was obviously going to get overrun, Mm -hmm. and guess what happened? He got overrun. Yeah. Like, instead of just hiding like he should have. (laughs) Yeah. Even his uh, partner at the time, uh, uh, the character Taslima, played by Valeria Galino, um... She's just like, oh, we gotta hide. He, she hides. He doesn't. Mm-hmm. He he gets caught. She comes and helps. And says, I told you, should have. <laughs> silly, it, silly nut. Yeah, it, it's just. It's it's a really fun movie, but like it makes you kind of facepalm with how stupid he is sometimes. Yeah. And um, you know, for being made in '96, too, a lot of the special effects are really bad. Yeah, um, I mean, that's that was a huge problem with a lot of people too. Yeah, granted. Th- I don't know what the average budget was in 95, 96, but like this was made for 50 million. That is low in today's standards. I mm-hmm. don't know if that was low for back then. Um, I don't think it would be, but it's, it's just, yeah. Um. It just, it's, 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 if, if it were things that I saw in the 80s, like I thought I was relatively impressed when I thought it was the 80s, and then I saw that it was 96. I was like, oh, Jurassic Park came out before that. Like, mm-hmm. you could do better. Um, but I, I, I think that this, the whole series creates a very interesting world that I really, really appreciated. Yeah, the world, world building is real. And I kind of glossed over the first. Did they say anything about New York? Or did it just in get like this overturned? One? Yeah. If I am honest, I, feel like I was they did half right paying attention in the beginning, so yeah. I didn't. I didn't really pay attention because there um, was a bunch of there was a bunch of text kind of stuff going on, and, mm-hmm. and I should have read it obviously, but I don't remember exactly what happened in New York to make them want to now move everything to L.A. I, I don't think they LA, moved everything to L.A. I think it was just different. I think it was just yeah. Uh, just, so there was like a tsunami or something, or just like yeah. California kind of got separated from the states and they were just like well that's gonna be the new shit <laughs> which is about as scientifically just, accurate they, they as this movie is. gets <laughs> uh because uh, yeah you know, california because will apparently eventually. eventually california will split off it will it's just a matter of, like when like it probably won't be in our yeah. lifetime but it, it's going to happen yeah um and uh yeah so um the thing that i thought was kind of funny about this is that the peter fonda uh, he plays like this surfer dude mm-hmm. who's just like doesn't feel like he's in the escape from LA. No. He's just like, yo, man, let's go get some waves, man. Like he's just completely ignoring the fact that he's in this this dystopian yeah, future just trying to get waves. Point break while we're all in escape from LA. <laughs> he's 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 in a uh, a halfway film between Easy Rider and Point Break. Yep. Just getting high and surfing. I, they don't show him getting high, but it's Peter Fonda. I assume yeah. he was high. <laughs> and <laughs> he's he's just, yo, the big waves coming. 
uh, and has no regard for his his uh, he his doesn't give a shit dune about buggy. his dune buggy at his all. His dune buggy just gets fucked up, and it's just like okay, whatever. Um, but also they like it was like the big wave that I guess doesn't happen, mm-hmm. but then also they had like a canal made for that big wave. Yeah, I I don't know. It was I'm weird. Not sure. It was it was it was a very. Uh, more of the whole movie of this whole thing is just it was a very Fast and Furious moment yes. in what Fast and Furious has become. Um, <laughs> just <laughs> Snake has just escaped the clutches of the the villain in this movie and just goes through the sewer system to get to the beach. Basically, mm-hmm. gets to the beach and this dude's like, "Yo, let's surf the tsunami." And then from there, uh, jumps on Steve Buscemi's car while riding the tsunami wave from a surfboard. That is literally some shit that I could see The Rock or Vin Diesel doing right at this moment. And 100%. I guarantee you, they look back and were like, I'm writing this shit down right now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the thing that I like most about these two movies is that even though they're like dystopian futures mm-hmm. and both places are essentially prisons now, they both make references to that city's particular culture in a way like in new york they have like a bunch of the uh prisoners like performing broadway on broadway Mm -hmm. and uh like it's it's not any grand thing or anything but there's still like that theater life uh that new york is famous for and uh, and then with this one they have the plastic surgery obviously yeah everywhere and then (laughs) and then uh steve buscemi's character is like an old map to the stars uh person Mm-hmm. So and, and they they just hold on to that that uh that the culture of both cities and make it very kind of tongue in cheek with the cities that they're about. Yeah. Um, I I just I it's, it's they're both very entertaining movies. New York is definitely better made at yeah. least story wise. And this one is not good, but I still found myself enjoying it. Like I I. Yeah. I, I thought the world was interesting enough to, to keep keep my attention. You know, I, I didn't want to turn it off at any point. I didn't hate it. I thought it was uh, very interesting. Um, let's just talk about how uh, how kind of a bad person Uncle Ben is, and maybe it's okay that Uncle Ben got shot by that thief. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, absolutely. Why yeah. not? Cliff Robertson, uh, who plays Uncle Ben in this, the original Spider-Man's trilo- Spider-Man's Spider-Man trilogy, uh, he plays the president in this, and he's an absolute maniac. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like just kill my daughter. Yeah, <laughs> kill her. Uh, and yeah, I mean that. I just wanted to bring up that as the Absolutely. same guy. I don't. I don't have anything to say other than that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I have a kind of a soft spot for these movies. You obviously know why. Just for a Kurt Russell. Yeah, you love Kurt um, Russell. I do love Kurt Russell. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> There's nothing else to say there. But uh, these, both of these movies have, I guess technically more of the first one have, were at least a huge inspiration for a huge game franchise. Um, yeah, I've talked about it to you a few times. We've talked about it on the podcast, Metal Gear Solid. Mm-hmm. So Snake Plissken was actually a huge inspiration for Solid Snake in the video games. Obviously. Yeah, you could definitely see. I yeah. mean, more than just the name too. Like, doesn't yeah. Solid Snake have an eye patch? Uh, <laughs> yes, but uh, or no, technically, but yes, because uh, Solid Snake's dad, who he was a, he was basically a clone of. Uh, the dad had an eye patch who was big, oh. big boss, uh, which was a uh, Venom Snake was his name, or not Venom Snake, but it's uh, just the big boss, you know, Snake, yeah. Naked Snake. Technically, it's this very long. If you want to talk anything Metal Gear Solid, it's a very, 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 very complicated story. But there's a lot of inspiration, just mainly from John Carpenter period, uh, Bowie and stuff like that. Uh, in those games, specifically Big Boss with the eye patch and how that's like transferred over to the snake, and and then the second game they actually use the name Snake Plissken when Snake's undercover, um, which is also a huge huge throwback. Period. Um, so it's it's really cool to see like how not only this this type of movie inspired that, but many other things that I mean I can't think of right now, but I can almost guarantee you this franchise has inspired so much later in its lifetime you know yeah 
Like Fast and Furious. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, there's not too much to say about this movie. This movie's super 90s, like, so yeah. to the point where they even have, like, the, the basketball scene, which uh, this this came around right at the time, like, the the uh, the Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan were doing really well, mm-hmm. uh, came around. I think it's the same year as uh, Space Jam. Maybe. So, you, you know, it was... Actually, a law in the 90s. I don't know if you knew this. It's a very un, uh, little known law. Mm-hmm. It was a law in the 90s that you had to have a basketball scene in every single movie that's, that, that's that takes place in L.A. Um, so Otherwise, consider yourself arrested immediately. Yeah. It's, it's, the funny thing is, like, that basketball scene is so predictable, too. Not, not the fact that it's coming up, but when they establish it, it's like, oh, he's going to win, and then the guy's going to try to shoot him anyway. Yeah. Like there's no it's, there's no question as to what's gonna happen. <laughs> it was it was that scene and the scene at the end of the movie when they're all on hang gliders, that yeah. definitely. I, I mean, and the tsunami surfing part that definitely didn't felt like they belonged in the slightest. No, no. <laughs> it's like what movie am I currently watching? And then you know they, it happened. I'm like, well, okay, yeah, interesting. But I mean, there's only two movies. Can you imagine if they did another escape movie? I would see it, honestly. I, I would like, see it because I feel like it would actually be really well done Yeah. at this point um, in time. I, I think that these movies, like, you know, they're, they're not trying to be anything else. They're just trying to be fun. Yeah. Like, they're not... And that's literally the tone of this whole second yeah, movie, for sure. They're, just they're, fun they're, action. Yeah, there might be a slight commentary on the U.S. government. Mm-hmm. Very slight. It's not anything that like anyone doesn't already believe. Mm-hmm. It's it's not like controversial. It's just like, oh yeah, the U.S. government is kind of shady sometimes. <laughs> like, and um, the the whole hypocrisy of like letting people have l- letting certain countries have weapons, but not other countries and yeah. stuff like that. Um, so yeah, the whole thing is just. It's it's just fun. It's just dumb. It doesn't just try to be goofball fun. Exactly. It's it's uh honestly like I the thing is definitely John Carpenter's best movie, at least the ones I've seen. Oh yeah. Um but this is probably not this these two are probably my most enjoyable of his. I'm not mm-hmm. a huge John Carpenter fan. I love what he did for the horror genre. I love that he kind of does everything his own. Way yeah, he's really good um, at world building and such, and just making stories exactly. You know? And and so like I, I'm I'm not going to try to say that I'm a good indicator of what John Carpenter movies are good. Yeah, but this is definitely my most enjoyed two, the two of them, not yes. necess- not just L.A. than uh, the other ones. But I've only seen like a handful of his movies, so I'm not true. Yeah, um, but I mean honestly, that's all I really have to talk about. To be honest. Yeah, same here. You know, it's it's a uh, it's a really fun film, um, and that's really all I could ask from it. Really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, should we get into the judgment, Glenn? Oh, why not? All right. So, uh, how about you go first? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just love Kurt Russell, man. <laughs> is that it? Yeah. So does that mean yes? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh no I, I mean i do i do think this movie's fun and all that but yeah. i don't think it deserves a spot amongst other movies that we've put it's a fun watch for sure past definitely. the time uh definitely if you want to watch it as a combo pack with both of them uh it's it's just as fun um and, it, and i think it's great for the world building that it had and the inspiration that it had on many other projects after it mm-hmm. but as as a movie by itself it's just dumb fun, you know? Yeah. It's, I don't think it deserves a spot other than just chilling. Just the the chilling boy, you know? Yeah. I 100% agree. It's definitely a fun movie. If you want to watch it, watch it. Yeah, I mean, that, that goes for every movie. Like, even if we hate a movie, yeah. if you want to watch it, you should watch it. Make your own um, assumption. Absolutely. And uh, I just... I I just enjoyed them for what they were. I, I don't think that they're they should be, like noteworthy or anything mm-hmm. but they're definitely fun so escape from la does not make it onto the shelf with the likes of apostle and handmaiden mm-hmm. that brings us to our plugs for this week Benjamin button what is your plug well 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 
So as most of you know, or at least that I've bragged about a few times, I kind of had a Twitch career in 2020. Mm-hmm. The air quotes on career. I did my damnedest because I didn't have a job for most of the time, so I did what I could. Um, on YouTube, basically I edited a huge chunk of ev- all my clips that I had from from Twitch and all that. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a really funny video. I was really proud of myself. I had a little bit of a hiccup in the beginning, like when I first edited it, and I had to edit it twice. I won't talk about that because it makes me sad, and I was in bed <laughs> the rest of the day after that. Crying. Uh, I personally think it's one, one of my best works of art that I've done is just me laughing at myself for 30 minutes of just random shit that I say. Mm-hmm. So on YouTube, it's going to be on my personal channel, or channel, RB Plugged In. It's called Red Borderliners Twitch Cut 2020. Legend has stated once every thousand years an egg shall be born. Born to change the entire history of the world as we know it. This is the story of that egg and how he came to be. Well, when a mommy Glenn and a daddy Glenn love each other very much, um, they start doing this thing called a ritual dance where they sacrifice goats and small little llamas and tiny babies if, uh, if they can acquire them. They throw them in a pit of fire and chant, Egg, egg, egg. And slowly but surely, I am conjured up from the depths of hell. And... <laughs> you, got, you got a fucking egg. So, Honestly, a little have... uh, self, uh, self self-promotion, promo, baby. Right? Yeah. Uh, so my plug for this week, uh, I've already kind of talked to you about this this weekend, and I mm-hmm. completely forgot that our, uh, on our ride back from filming, I sh- probably should have showed you this band a little bit. Yeah. Uh, my plug is going to be the band Foxing. Um, they are a uh, k- kind of like indie rock, uh, sometimes hardcore, sometimes uh, they're they're hard to put into a genre. Yeah, uh, but they are uh, a, a band from uh, St. Louis, Missouri, and um, all of their stuff's good. But their album "Nearer My God" is fantastic. It's probably one of the best albums of the past five years, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, you would like this. Mike Shinoda of Lincoln Park fame <gasps> remixed one of their songs. Uh, oh, the remix is good, but I still like the original more. Yeah. But, uh, so, yeah, the that the whole band, Foxing, specifically... Oh, you actually told me about this over the weekend. Yeah, specifically the album Nearer My God, and if you want to listen to a real dope song, Grand Paradise... All right. It's a great song. So those are our plugs for this week. That brings us to our assignment for next week. Glenn, Jim, and Bayon, it is my turn. Not your mm-hmm. turn. My mm-hmm. turn. Don't you dare step on my toes, you <laughs> son of a bitch. Gonna, I was going to speak up. <laughs> uh, so I am going to pick a film uh, that was uh, nominated for Best Foreign Film at the Golden Globes in 2012. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also has an American remake called The Upside with uh, Kevin Hart and Brian Cranston. But we're going to watch the original version, which is French, I believe. Yes, it's a French film called The Intouchables, and that is available on Amazon and Netflix, I think. Uh, it says it's available on Amazon. It's definitely available on Netflix, um, but, uh, you know, if you only have Amazon, maybe check out Amazon. Selon le contrat, vous disposez également d'une dépendance. Allez de vous, Philippe. C'est qui, ce type Autour de toi, tout le monde s'inquiète. Comment il est grand, il est costaud, il a deux bras, deux jambes, un cerveau qui fonctionne, il est en bonne santé. Trop long, là Les gars des cités, ils n'ont aucune pitié. C'est ce que je veux. Aucune pitié. Voilà. C'est bon comme ça Attends. C'est un truc de ouf, là. Vous avez fini de jouer, non Eh, mais en fait, vous sentez rien du tout, là. Bon appétit. Eh, 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 eh. Ah, 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 ah. Ça frise la paresse, là, pour envoyer un peu 
and it is uh, directed by Oliver Nakashe and Eric Tol- Tol- Toledano, uh, written by Olive- Olivier Nakashe, Philip Pozo de Borgo, and Eric Toledano. It's starring Francois Cluzet, Omar Sy, uh, who was one of the voices in Mune that we mm-hmm. know. Uh, he's also in a few other American films. Uh, Anne Lee Nee and uh, Audrey Fleurot. Uh It is about... After he becomes a quadriplegic from a paragliding accident, an aristocrat hires a young man from the projects to be his caregiver. Um, yeah, I'm excited to watch this. I've been wanting to watch it for a while. Wanted to watch The Upside, too, but figured I should watch the original first. Yeah, I was going to try to see The Upside at a certain point uh, yeah. when the movie was actually out. I never got around to it, so I didn't even know there was like an original yeah, so. yeah, it's uh, the the upside is an American remake of the French film, mm-hmm. um, which I kind of put two and two together, like way too late, probably like a year after the upside came out, yeah. which I I still never saw it, but like just <laughs> just kind of funny. Uh, oh, also, it is a uh, adapted from an autobi- uh, autobiographical tale, Le Second Souffle, um, by Philippe Pozo de Borgo. So it sounds like it's based on a true story. Which is kind of mm-hmm. cool. Uh, so, yeah, that is The Untouchables available on Netflix and possibly Amazon as well. Uh, and that is our assignment. That will do it for our episode this week. Thank you, everyone, for listening. As always, you can check out our website, www.keystonefilmreview.com. On Instagram, we're your Keystone underscore film underscore review. On uh, what's next? Uh, Twitter, Keystone underscore film. Facebook, Keystone Film Review. YouTube, Keystone Film Review. And on Letterboxd, I am Mike KFR. And I'm Glenn KFR. And that will do it until next week when we watch The Untouchables. The French title is, I think, just The Untouchables as well. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Call me Snake. Ah. I'm not going to do that. Come on. Snake. Yeah. Bye. Oh, bye. Bye.